glycosaminous glycans are large complexes of heteropolysaccharide chains. They are generally associated with a small amount of protein, forming proteoglycans. Glycoproteins, on the other hand, consist primarily of protein with a small amount of carbohydrate. Today, we will cover three topics. First, we'll look at glycosaminose glycans. Glycosaminose glycans have the special ability to bind large amount of water, thereby producing the gel-like matrix that form the basis of the body's ground substance. Along with fibrous proteins and adhesive proteins, glycosaminose glycans make up the extracellular matrix. They provide flexible support for fibrous and adhesive proteins. They act as sieve, influencing water and salt movement through extracellular matrix. They are a component of mucus secretion due to lubricating properties. As a result, they are also called mucopolysaccharides. Glycosaminose glycans are made up of repeating disaccharide units. Each unit consists of an acidic sugar and an amino sugar. Acidic sugar can be either D-glucuronic acid or a C5 epimer. Hydrolonic acid. Amino sugar can be either D glucosamine or D galactosamine, and this is D glucosamine. There's an exception. In keratin sulfate, galactose is in place of acidic sugar. Glycosaminose glycans contains carboxyl groups and sulfate groups. Strong negative charges cause molecules to be extended outwards and repair adjacent molecules. Each molecule is surrounded by hydrated shear. They are complexable, but when released, springs back to original hydrated volume. Reversible complexability accounts for resilience of synovial fluid and vicious humor of the eye. Glycosaminose glycans are classified into six major types. First type is conjoining 4 or 6 sulfate. This is a standard glycosaminose glycan. Glucuronic acid provides the acidic sugar. N acetyl galactosamine provides the amino sugar. Two sugars are joined together by beta-1,3 glycosidic bond. Sulfate group is added at either C4 or C6 position. Conjoining sulfate has been used along with glucosamine to treat osteoarthritis. Other glycosaminose glycans deviate from conjoining sulfate by change in one or two sugars. Dermatin sulfate, for example, uses hydrolonic acid as acidic sugar. Keratin sulfate uses galacto instead of acidic sugar, and glucosamine instead of galactosamine. Among these three, dermatin sulfate is clinically important because of two structure features. First, it uses hydronic acid as the acidic sugar. Second, hydronic acid is often sulfated at C2 position. Dermatin sulfates Builds up in Hunter and Hurler syndrome. This is a hyaluronic acid. It is unique because it does not contain any sulfate group. 
it serves as lubricant. Heparin and heparin sulfate are very similar. They have three major features. One is highly sulfated. Second, they also contain ironic acid as the acidic sugar. Third, ironic acid is often sulfated at C2 position. Among these three, heparin and heparin sulfate are clinically important. Heparin is produced and stored inside mast cells. It serves as an anticoagulant. Heparin sulfate builds up in hunter and Hurler syndrome. Now, let's move to part two. We will look at proteoglycans. The majority of glycosaminose glycans in the body are linked to core proteins, forming proteoglycans, or mucopolysaccharides. Here is an example. Aggregan is a proteoglycan. It is made up of chondroitin sulfate and keratin sulfate attached to the core protein. The protein is then attached to hyaluronic acid non-covalently. This structure resembles a bottle brush. This is aggregate in a larger scale. Each of these is a proteoglycan monomer. Each monomer is made up of conjointing sulfate and keratin sulfate attached to the core protein. The protein is then attached to hyaluronic acid non-covalently with the aid of linker proteins. In a proteoglycan, carbohydrates and protein are linked through trihexoside and serine or threonine residue. Trihexoside is made up of galacto, Galactose and xylose. Proteoglycans are attached to the surface of many types of cells, especially epithelial cells. The most common proteoglycan on the plasma membrane is syndicin. This is a syndicin. Sulfated glycosaminose glycan on the extracellular domain binds to fibrous collagen and to fibronectin to anchor extracellular matrix to the cells. The cytoplasmic domain of syndicin interacts with the acting cytoskeleton. Many growth factors, such as FGF, are sequestered and presented to the cells by proteoglycans. An active hormone is released by proteolysis of proteoglycan core protein or partial degradation of heparin sulfate chains. These processes occur during tissue growth and remodeling or after infection. Synthesis of proteoglycans occurs in ER and Golgi, similar to glycogen synthesis but exported from the cell. Family of specific transferases catalyze elongation of polysaccharide chains by alternate placement of their UDP sugar or CMP sugar. This is a UDP N acetyl glucosamine. This is a UDP N acetyl galactosamine. They can be converted from one to another. This is a CMP N acetyl neuraminic acid or CMT nana. Here, we use dermatin sulfate as an example to describe synthesis of a proteoglycan. It occurs in ER and Golgi. While the core protein is being synthesized in the rough ER, xylose is transferred from UDP xylose to the hydroxyl group of either serine or threonine residue of the core protein. Further transfer of two galactose molecules complete the trihexose linker. 
This is followed by sequential addition of acidic and amino sugars. In this process, chain modifications occur. The first modification is addition of sulfate group to mm. N-acetyl galactosamine. Some glucuronic residues are converted to iduronia residues. This information is summarized in this slide. Addition of sulfate groups occurs in the forming polymer. It is carried out by sulfur transferase. Sulfate carried by a nucleotide. 3 phosphoadenosine 5 phosphosulfate or PUPS is the sulfate donor. Before a proteoglycan is synthesized, sugar units must be synthesized first. These include amino sugars and acidic sugars. All amino sugars, N-acetyl glucosamine, N-acetyl galactosamine, and NANA are derived from fructose 6-phosphate. Hydroxyl group at C2 position of fructose 6-phosphate is replaced by amino group donated by glutamine giving rise to glucosamine 6-phosphate. The amino group is almost always acetylated. The result is N-acetyl glucosamine 6-phosphate. Here is a branch point. Through an isomerization reaction, phosphate group is moved from position 6 to position 1. Diphosphate nucleoside UDP is added. The result is UDP, N acetyl glucosamine. These two steps follow a pathway similar to that for UDP glucose synthesis that I have described to you before in glycogen synthesis lecture. Epimerization reaction leads to UDP, N-acetyl galactosamine. From the same N-acetyl glucosamine 6-phosphate, epimerization at C2 position leads to N-acetyl mannosamine 6-phosphate, which reacts with phosphoenol pyruvate, producing N-acetyl neuraminic acid 9-phosphate. Finally, monophosphate nucleoside CMP is added, giving rise to CMP nana. This information is summarized in this slide. Neuraminic acid is a 9-carbon monosaccharide. Here is a neuraminic acid. It has a carboxyl group at C1 position and three additional carbons at C6 position. The N or O substituted derivatives of neuraminic acid are collectively called sialic acids, the predominant form in mammalian cells being N acetyl neuraminic acid or NANA. Here is a GM1 ganglion side, a glycolipid, and this is a NANA. Position 2 of NANA is involved in glycosidic bond. NANA is normally a residue of oligosaccharide side chains of glycoproteins, glycolipids, or less frequently, glycosaminoglycans. NANA acts as a receptor for influenza viruses, allowing attachment to mucous cells via hemagglutinin. Nitrogen and carbon atoms in NANA come from N-acetyl glucosamine 6-phosphate and phosphoenol pyruvate. N-acetyl glucosamine 6-phosphate is converted to N-acetyl mannosamine 6-phosphate by an epimerase. 
This reacts with PEP to produce n acetyl neuraminic acid 9 phosphate by a synthase. The phosphate group is removed by a phosphatase, giving rise to NANA. CMP n acetyl neuraminic acid synthetase attach CMP to NANA, giving rise to CMP NANA. CMP NANA is the only nucleotide sugar where the carrier is a monophosphate. UDP glucuronic acid is synthesized from UDP glucose by oxidation at C6 position of glucose. Glucuronic acid is a precursor for vitamin C. It is required for detoxification of drugs, steroids, and bilirubin. Hydronic acid is synthesized from D-glucuronic acid by epimerization. It occurs after incorporation of D-glucuronic acid into the carbohydrate chain. It is categorized by uronosyl 5 epimerase. Glucuronic acid is released from UDP glucuronic acid first in the form of D glucuronic acid 1 phosphate and then D glucuronic acid. D glucuronic acid is oxidized to allyl glucuronate. This is a precursor for vitamin C. In humans, the key enzyme for vitamin C synthesis pathway is absent. Allylcholonate is converted to d xylulose and funneled into HMP pathway. Uronic acid pathway provides entry point for dietary d xylulose into metabolism. Degradation of glycosaminose glycans occurs in lysosome in reverse order of synthesis steps, catalyzed by acid hydrolysis, except of keratin sulfate, glycosaminose glycans have short half-lives, 3 days for hyaluronic acid, 10 days for chondroitin and dermatin sulfates. Because glycosaminose glycans are found extracellularly, they must be phagocytosed to be degraded. A large number of enzymes are required for complete degradation. Inability to degrade glycosaminous glycans leads to mucopolysaccharidosis. This is an example of heparin sulfate. This is a non-reducing end. First step in degradation of heparin sulfate is removal of sulfate group from hydronic acid. This is catalyzed by hydronate sulfatase, followed by removal of hydronic acid residue by hydronidase. These two enzymes are clinically important. Deficiency in either enzyme leads to mucopolysaccharidosis. Specifically, a deficiency in sulfatase leads to Hunter syndrome. A deficiency in hydronidase causes Hurler syndrome. Mucopolysaccharidosis are hereditary disorders characterized by accumulation of glycosaminose glycans in various tissues due to defective lysosomal enzymes. Hurler syndrome is an example of mucopolysaccharidosis. The resulting presence of oligosaccharides in urine due to incomplete breakdown of glycosaminose glycans. Diagnosis can be confirmed by testing enzyme levels of lysosomal hydrolase. Diagnosis can be confirmed by testing enzyme levels of lysosomal acid hydrolases in patient cells. Currently, enzyme replacement therapy is available. We will focus on Hunter and Hurler syndromes.
Hunter syndrome has mild and severe forms. It is an X-linked disorder. Patients with Hunter syndrome has facial and physical deformities and mental retardation, but without corneal clouding. Patients with Hurler syndrome have corneal clouding, dwarfism, and mental retardation. To differentiate Hunter versus Hurler syndrome, corneal clouding is a key symptom. To make it easy, we have a mnemonic. Hunter shoots the target X with clear corneas. It describes Hunter as an X-linked disease without cornea clouding. Now, let's move to part three. We will look at glycoproteins. In glycoproteins, carbohydrate chains are often branched instead of linear. They may or may not be negatively charged. They are short. Oligosaccharide part is a mixture of dehexosis, nana, and erafucos, a deoxy sugar. Oligosaccharide attached to protein through either N-link or O-link. Glycoproteins contain highly variable amounts of carbohydrate. For example, immunoglobulin IgG contains less than 4% of its mass as carbohydrate. Mucin, on the other hand, a human gastric glycoprotein, contains more than 80% as carbohydrate. O-link oligosaccharides are found in membrane glycoproteins or extracellular glycoproteins. For example, band 3 and band 4.5 proteins in glycophorin are membrane glycoproteins and they carried O-link oligosaccharides that determine ABO blood group types. This represents a glycoprotein. The first two sugars, galacto and n galactose, are attached to the hydroxyl group of either serine or threonine. If the third sugar transferred to the carbohydrate chain is n galactosamine it will produce A antigens. If the third sugar transferred to the carbohydrate chain is galactose, it will yield B antigens. Therefore, people with type A blood have A antigens on the surface of red blood cells and anti-B antibodies in plasma. People with type B blood have B antigens on red blood cells and type A antibodies in plasma. People with type AB blood have A and B antigens on red blood cells, but with no either anti-A or B antibodies in plasma. People with type O blood have no A or B antigen on red blood cells, but have both anti-A and B antibodies in plasma. The O-linked oligosaccharides in glycophorin and many other glycoproteins are linked to the hydroxyl group in serine or threonine residues by N-acetyl galactosamine. Collagens contain a characteristic glucose galactose disaccharide attached to the hydroxy lysine residues. Synthesis of O-link glycosides occurs in ER and Golgi in a manner similar to synthesis of proteoglycans. Protein is synthesized on rough ER and then extruded into lumen of ER, where glycosylation occurs through actions of glycosyl transferases. Formation of disulfide bonds and folding of peptides also take place in ER. Glycosylation begins with transfer of n acetyl galactosamine onto hydroxyl group of serine or threonine residues. After glycosylation, glycoproteins move to 
pedagogy for packaging. Glycoproteins destined for function inside the cell remain free in the lumen of Golgi. Glycoproteins destined for cell membrane become part of Golgi cell membrane and butt off to fuse with cell membrane oriented in the right direction. Carbohydrate moiety facing outside the cell. In this diagram, this is cytosol and this is ER lumen. Inside ER lumen, glycosylation, formation of disulfide bonds, and folding of peptide take place. The unlinked oligosaccharides found in mammalian serum glycoproteins have various structures, but all contain five sugars highlighted in purple. 2 N acetyl glucosamine and 3 mannose. They are branched and linked to the amide nitrogen of asparagine. And link oligosaccharides can be divided into two broad classes. One is complex oligosaccharides that contain diverse group of additional sugars such as N acetyl glucosamine Alafucus and nana. The other one is high mannose oligosaccharides that primarily contain mannose, such as these. Unlinked glycans are synthesized in ER and Golgi. Biosynthesis of unlinked glycans differs from O linked by use of dolichol phosphate. This is dolichol. It is an ER membrane lipid, 80 to 100 carbons long. The core protein is synthesized on rod ER and enters ER lumen. Two N acetyl glucosamine residues are attached to the dolichol molecule through a pyrophosphate linkage, followed by five mannose residues. These steps are catalyzed by membrane-bound glycosyl transferases. Subsequent sugars, four mannose and three glucose residues are added, giving rise to the precursor oligosaccharide containing 2 n acetyl glucosamine, 9 mannose and 3 glucose residues. The precursor oligosaccharide is transferred to the protein at the asparagine residue by oligosaccharyl transferase present in the ER. Unlinked oligosaccharide is processed by removal of specific mannose and glucose residues as the protein moves through the ER. Processing continues in Golgi and the oligosaccharide chain is completed in Golgi either as a complex or high glycan. This information is summarized in this slide. Why in Golgi, N-linked glycoproteins can be phosphorylated at one or more mannose residues. Mannose-6-phosphate receptors in Golgi bind the mannose-6-phosphate residues of the target enzymes to facilitate their translocation to lysosome. Here is clinical correlation. In eye cell disease, hydrolytic enzymes normally found in lysosome are absent. It is caused by a deficiency in N acetyl glucosamine phosphotransferase, which phosphorylates mannose residue to mannose 6 phosphate on N link glycoproteins in the Golgi apparatus. Without mannose 6 phosphate to target them to the lysosome, the enzymes are transported from Golgi to the extracellular space. 
This results in large intracellular inclusions of molecules requiring lysosomal degradation in patients. In this disease, lysosomal enzymes are found in patients' plasma. Compared with Hurler syndrome, in the eye cell disease, lipids, glycosaminose glycans, and carbohydrates are present in the blood of the patient. In Hurler syndrome, only glycosaminose glycans will be present in the blood. Degradation of oligosaccharides from glycoproteins follows a pathway similar to that for degradation of glycosaminose glycans. Exoenzymes remove groups in reverse order to their incorporation. When any enzyme is missing, it causes accumulation of partially degraded glycoproteins in lysosomes. This will lead to glycoprotein storage diseases or oligosaccharidosis. 